Hello and welcome back to episode four, where we are going to continue looking at film language. I'm hoping from the previous episode, you have now made the decision on what your opening and closing shot for your film is, because they're such crucial shots in conveying the meaning of the story. But let's not forget the rest of the film, because in fact, throughout the entire story, every single shot is vital in telling us the story. Now, we're going to cover a few things in this episode. The first one is composition, how we compose our shots. And again, every decision that's made has meaning and is vital. There's no right or wrong. It's all about what you want to convey to the audience. How do you want them to feel at each moment of the story? And if you ask yourself, what is the emotion of this part of the story? It would then tell you what kind of shot you're going for, because you would convey how you want the audience to feel. So let's look at composition then. What's really important about composition is understanding your location. I cannot overstate that good filmmaking is all about preparation. You really need to look at your location, look at the space that you have, and then work out where the best place to place the camera is. I'm going to show you an example here. This is an opening shot from a short film called R.I.P. Audrey that I've shot over lockdown with my daughter. This is about the loss of a pet fish, but this is a bigger metaphor about death and about coronavirus. Now, this opening shot as the young girl comes down her stairs, the location I had was a child's bedroom. But you'll notice how I've composed with the bed itself and with the units on the side, I've created what is called leading lines. There's almost a sense of destiny with how I've composed this shot. And it draws our eyes to the character and to what the character is looking at. So how we compose, what we put within our frame and where we place the camera is really important. The other element I want to look at is something called mise en scène, which is a French term, and it basically means what populates the frame, everything that's in the image. And this is again where you as filmmakers have full control. Where you place that camera, how you compose your shots, you must decide what are the details. So for example, that opening shot from R.I.P. Audrey, you probably don't notice, but in the left-hand corner of the window is a skeleton because the film is all about death. Likewise, in this other shot, when the young girl wakes up, subtly in the background is a poster that says, I'm not lazy, I'm just easily tired. It's a subtle way of the character coming through with what we populate in the image. It makes it feel real and it tells us something about that character. So again, I really want you to think, what is it that you are placing within your shots? Every detail that you pick and choose has meaning and tells the story. So that's another thing I really want you to think about as you are putting your film together, is that across your shots, are you thinking about all the details, the props, the elements that you're placing? These are key details and they ultimately tell the story. Finally, the other element I want to talk about, I've used examples of a black and white film that I've actually shot, but I'm a deep fan of using colour in my films. And by that, I mean I often think about the colour palette. So in previous films, I've used the colour palette of red, where throughout the film, characters are always wearing red because red has many meanings. It could be about blood, it could be about passion, it could be about death. So what I want you to also think about is your choice of colours, is again where you place the camera, can you change things? Could you change a top that a character wears? Could you place books on the background of a shelf so they create a colour scheme? So again, I really want you to start thinking about how colour tells your story, because all colour has a meaning. So we've covered some quite heavy subject matters there, composition, mise-en-scene and colour. But for now, what I want you to do is to start storyboarding. Storyboarding is a vital aspect to filmmaking. It helps us plan. Now, 
I can show you some examples here of storyboarding. It doesn't matter how good you are at drawing, some of the best directors in the world, my favourite director, Martin Scorsese, and a film from the 70s called Taxi Driver, the storyboards for that are terrible, they're stick men. But a storyboard is just a guide. So don't worry if you can't draw particularly well. But what I now want you to start planning to do is storyboarding your whole idea. Is a bit like a comic book, you have your frames, and I want you to now start drawing your different shots that tell your idea. Some of this may slightly change as we look at the next episodes, so your storyboards may evolve. They also may evolve when you look at your locations and look at what you have to work with. But storyboards are ultimately a blueprint. So what I want you to do as your next task, and it's a big task, is to now start sketching out from your opening shot all the way through to your last shot. It's a big task, enjoy doing that. Again, there's no right or wrong, try things out. And I look forward to the next episode where we're now gonna look at the other elements of filmmaking, such as sound and editing, that are so vital as parts of your storytelling. Enjoy the storyboarding. <laughs>